Hi, my name is yeah. Chalian for paper. Sí, yes. uh, okay, 97. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. No problem. Uh, so, okay. Chilan uh, yeah. with a presentation entitled uh, Cyber Neuro RT Real Time Neuromorphic Cybersecurity. Please, okay. uh, Chilan, uh, yeah. you can start your presentation, please. Okay, thank you so much. And I apologize for uh, getting the rooms mixed up. Um, can you see, let's see, can you, let's see, you're seeing my display, uh, pre presenter view, and now you're hopefully just seeing um, the slides? Okay, uh, so this is called Cyber Neuro RT, Real-Time Neuromorphic Cybersecurity, joint work with uh, Weiler Zam, Tyler Stern, uh, Malab Malabam Bal, Professor Sengupta, Ashwin Jos, uh, myself, and Srinivasan. Uh, most of us are with Quantum Ventura, uh, but uh, Malaban and uh, Professor Sengupta are with uh, Penn State University. And um, so uh, the, the problem statement is uh, cybersecurity in HPC clusters, high performance computing clusters. So HPC clusters uh, operate much faster and with much more data than you might find in uh, typical uh, IT domains that companies face. So how do we address this larger scale? So the tools that were created for traditional IT domains uh, don't support this much, the, the greater amount of data and the faster throughput of this data. So neural networks is, is one way of doing it. Um, and then in particular, you might use some edge-based hardware resident uh, technologies such as neuromorphic processors to monitor and even predict uh, events in HPC environments. So we, we sought to evaluate the viability of real-time HPC scale neuromorphic cybersecurity and we call our system Cyber Neuro RT. Um, so first we'll start with some data to simulate the high throughput environment. Uh, data was adapted from the University of New South Wales data set, includes uh, many data sources like IoT, Windows, and uh, uh, Linux uh, data. And then uh, there's a uh, feature extraction, early feature extraction called Zeek logs, uh, which, uh, which sort of monitor the packets. And with that, we had about 450,000 entries. 66% uh, of this data was, was normal and there was uh, nine attack types. So um, for the feature selection, uh, so it started with originally 45 features. Uh, then we removed two, which were the label, uh, having to do with the label, the type of attack. Uh, that was about 42, 42 or 43 features. And then that's still a lot of features. So then we used a random forest classifier to down select among the uh, original features. And then you know, you'll see the results there on the right, uh, was picking things like source uh, uh, IP, destination IP, the bytes, ports, the duration, uh, service code, and things like this. Uh, and then this was used as an input into an autoencoder. And the autoencoder is doing a, a dimensionality reduction and looking for uh, lower dimensional subspace, which explains uh, normal versus uh, abnormal traffic. Uh, it, it, we've continued this work and are looking at other ways of doing feature extraction and uh, dimensionality reduction. So we used 85% of our data for training and 15% used for, for testing. Um, and uh, now I'll talk about uh, the deep learning network that uh, sits on top of the feature extraction methods. So we used a, a 10 layer deep neural network, uh, nine layers plus the one input layer. And we did some initial hyperparameter tuning using Kiris, Kiris Tuner. Uh, and, and that gave pretty good results, but we also wanted to explore the sort of edge uh, computing ability of using uh, neuromorphic computers. So within the neuromorphic computing um, market, there's there's two major offerings, Intel and BrainShip, um, with, with very different personalities, but uh, uh, we wanted to explore both. So what you see, uh, you sort of have to translate from a full precision 
um, GPU model to a reduced precision uh, neuromorphic computing model. And what you see in the right is the translation of uh, the original artificial neural network down to a spiking neural network. Uh, so what happens is you remove things that are only used during dropout, uh, only used during training, such as dropout, um, removing uh, batch normalizations to the preceding layer. Uh, and then you convert, uh, then you have a, a model with, which is compatible with the hardware, but has um, fewer features uh, than the full precision GPU model. After that, there's some additional parameters one can tune on the spiking neural network. Uh, things like how long do you run the integration time on the neurons uh, and other, uh, uh, other hyperparameters just having to do with simulating the artificial neural network with spiking hardware. So we had access to the Intel Loihi chip via the, via the INRC cloud, Intel Neuromorphic Research Consortium. Uh, and then for brain chip, we simulated their chips on CPU uh, via a hardware abstraction layer. We, we, we now have access to both, both Intel and brain chips uh, hardware, and we're doing, uh, continuing our experiments there. For Intel, we use the SNN toolbox uh, to do the conversion. And for BrainShip, we used their product, which is called CNN to SNN. Um, the, the process is similar to Intel in that you remove features that are not supported by the hardware, um, certain activation and layer types and, and dropping things like batch normalization. Um, and uh, we also looked at something called des design space exploration. So as I mentioned in the Intel case, there's, there's a hyperparameter of how many time steps do you integrate the differential equations to simulate the neurons? So uh, that's known as the threshold. And so we can vary that threshold to see how that affects the uh, speed accuracy tra trade-off. Uh, more time steps means more accuracy, but also more time. Um, so that speaks to the runtime control. There's also design time control where you can have two different neuron types. In this case, we looked at the reset integrate and fire model and the subtractive inter integrate and fire model. Um, okay, here are our results. Uh, using the full precision model, we got about 94% uh, correct. Uh, chance of performance is 66%. And it was extremely fast, 0.34 seconds to do about uh, 10,000 vectors. For the Intel, um, we also varied the precision of the converted model. Uh, at eight bits, we got the same accuracy, 94%. At four bits, uh, we got 67%, which is which is pretty much chance. For the brain chip, um, uh, accuracy also increased with precision, but were slightly lower. Uh, brain chip got 83% at eight bits and 67% again chance at that. Uh, four bits. Uh, our, our work is one of the, the few and first papers that compare Intel and, and BrainChip on the same data set. Going forward, we will tune the BrainChip model to increase its accuracy and also try things on hardware, not just CPU simulation. With regards to de design time control, uh, this, uh, the subtractive integrated and fire uh, was chosen over the reset integrate and fire model because it, it had greater accuracy. You'll see in the plot on the right there, uh, where the blue is a subtractive integrate and fire. And regardless of the number of time steps that you run that model, it's always um, giving better results than the red line, which is below it, the reset integrate and fire model. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to give a discussion and conclusion. The feasibility of real-time HP scale, HPC scale neuromorphic cybersecurity was assessed. We call our system Cyber Neuro RT. We used algorithms including full precision uh, deep learning and then conversion of deep learning to reduce precision spiking neural networks and also design exploration within spiking neural networks. Uh, neuromorphic implementations of the full precision networks were roughly comparable um, in terms of accuracy but are much uh, uh, smaller and uh, costly. So uh, for example, a GPU uh, is the size of a GPU, but these uh, neuromorphic computers are estimated to be about the size of a USB thumb drive. 
um, a GPU may be thousands of US dollars, whereas a neuromorphic computer is expected to be on the order of 50 US dollars. So this approach has been validated and we're, we're doing more research to, to prove this out. So there's a number of uh, ways we can continue exploring this uh, research, uh, like tuning the networks to reduce false positives, uh, trying the algorithms on hardware, using larger or different data sets. Um, and uh, one point to note is that in addition to using neuromorphic computing, we can also run the models on uh, GPUs if, if, uh, uh, if a site prefers to do it that way rather than using neuromorphic computers. One thing we did learn is that there's differences between software simulation of the brain chip and uh, hardware uh, running of the Intel, and we intend to study these further. And uh, for design space exploration, there were both design time control knobs and runtime control knobs. Um, so with that, I'd like to conclude and thank the Department of Energy for this, uh, for um, funding this research. And uh, we're now continuing this research in a phase two. Thank you, I'd love to take questions. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Suhas. Uh, we have a few minutes or uh, are there any questions for the audience? It seems no, uh, okay. Uh, congratulations, Suhas, and thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, and finally, thanks to everyone here uh, for your attention, uh, this session has ended. Hi, Francisco. Okay. We will have a break for lunch. And after that, the rest of the session will be in auditory. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.